Hip Hip Tally Ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London talking about stuff and having increasingly peculiar facial hair, um, which just seems to have a mind of its own at the moment. Anyway, today we're continuing in the City of London because it's so tricky filming everywhere at the moment because of all the lockdown. So I apologise, we've covered some of these things before, but not all of them. And uh, of course, behind me is the Bank of England. We are in the centre of what's known as the Square Mile, the financial district. Thousands of people come and work here every day, normally, when there isn't a lockdown. Now, come and have a look. You see these lampposts? We were talking about the city livery companies, the worshipful company of skinners, the worshipful company of tax collectors and everything. Well, they are all, the, all the important ones are remembered here on these lampposts. So this one, I don't know if you can see it, it says skinners, and that'll be their coat of arms. Um, and all of them have got one. We've got... Uh, worshipful company of goldsmiths. The goldsmiths hall is around the corner there. That's where you get the word hallmark. When people brought their gold items to be confirmed as gold, they would have taken them to the, the goldsmiths hall. Um, that's why you call it a hallmark. We've got uh, the Salters Tax Collectors Union. I think the most recent one was the worshipful company of IT consultants or, so, or something like that was the, was the most recent one. It's easy for a poor girl to make money. Yeah, they've got, a, um, they've got a nice museum in the Bank of England there, which you can go to visit, but not today, because it's closed. But I'm going to let Vintage Jewels tell you all about it. If you look on any of your bank notes, it says, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of £20. It was like an IOU. You used to be able to take it to the Bank of England and demand the equivalent in gold bullion or whatever. But I can confirm that it no longer works. But on a 50p piece, there's a lady on it. Now, her name is Britannia but she was modelled on the Duchess of Richmond, who was said to be so beautiful that the randy King Charles II had to climb over her garden wall to try and win her affections. But she was not at all impressed, and he failed miserably. Vous connaissez cette personne sous le cheval? This statue here of Wellington is cast out of the guns that he captured from the French at the Battle of Waterloo. Le, le, le canon, le canon le français, le oui. Ah. You don't even want to be reminded about that. No, probably not. Sorry. I didn't build it. It wasn't me. <laughs> I know a fact about Equestrian statues. Foot is up. I think it means the rider died in battle. Injured. If injured, injured, if it's rearing two feet up, dead. 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 Gone it, up. It's one of those <laughs> urban myths. It's complete Wellington. balls. Do you know who that bloke world? is over there, the statue? No. Oh, do you care? No. <laughs> this dude up here is James Greathead which, <laughs> despite his excellent name, is not a porn star, right? <laughs> he's, he actually, he's the guy who invented a special shield which speeded up the tunnelling process, which they used on the underground, under the Thames and stuff. And speaking of things which are underground, did you know the first subterranean public lavatory was underneath the ground here? This is where we get the... Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm oh, sorry. That's How much do you think it costs? It used to cost one penny to go. Hence the expression to spend a penny. Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. Whee! Thanks, mate. I'll, I'll, I'll come into your bedroom and ruin your performance tonight. It's <laughs> 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 so, quite a dish. Now, over there is the mansion house. The mansion house is where the Lord Mayor of London lives. I don't mean the guy who we vote for. I mean, someone votes for him, but only people who live in the city of London or work in the city. It's something to do with some complicated process. But yes, I think he occupies the top two floors in there. He gets nice big robes. He gets a parade every year. He gets to sit in the Old Bailey, actually, because the Central Criminal Court, he's actually the Lord, the Chief Justice. So if you get tried in the Old Bailey, the judge always sits slightly to the left on the bench and they, he leaves a, a space in the centre, just in case the Lord Mayor wants to show up. <laughs> I don't think he ever does. So yeah, meanwhile, the other mayor, who was like Sadiq Khan at the moment, it used to be Boris Johnson, he gets to live in a flat in South London and work in a, an office over on the south of the river. Whereas this guy rides, rides around in a beautiful coach, beautiful gold carriage. The other mayor gets a bike. <laughs> I mean, the first one was in 1189, first ever Lord Mayor, but then in 1215, King John, who was uh, Robin Hood's enemy, I think, <laughs> allowed people to vote for a Lord Mayor. It's the most famous one, of course, being Dick Whittington. It's actually a court in there itself. It, there is a court in there. And Emmeline Pankhurst, the suffragette, she was held in one of the cells downstairs. 
they often block off the area on weekends and stuff to film things. In fact, the film Suffragette, I recall, was filmed down here. That's my favourite tube entrance. Is it? Yeah, there's something about it. I mean, we can't really see it. I like how it sculptures and curves around and it's all sort of, I don't know, rabbity Warren-like. I like yeah. it, I enjoy it. This whole area would have had loads of people walking around dressed like this. Nowadays, people just think I'm a freak for dressing like this. It was perfectly normal 50 years ago to go walking around here. Um, that building over there, for example, so much history, I can't cover everything. I mean, that, that place over there is where the first postmarks were made in the whole world. I mean, it's a, the, the post office, the first post office was there, the main post office, anyway. It's easy for a young man to get old, splashing around in cash when the streets are paved with gold. But it ain't easy for a poker to get ahead of No, I want to know if anybody has any idea what these mysterious my theory is that this is probably just there to protect this ra this drain pipe because it's quite an old drain pipe it's one of these metal ones and i reckon it's to stop people i don't know taking a horse or a car and bashing into it oh, and knocking it down because then that really smashes the drain pipe well they had horses and carts right up to the 70s didn't they when they're collecting oh yeah like rag and bone men stepto and son yes. But yeah, I mean, that's a pretty old pipe, isn't it? Um, and so I expect that is probably is the leftover from the days when horse and cart would come down here. They wanted to protect it. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Well, who knows? I'm sure someone will let us know if we're wrong. <laughs> it's right opposite the City of London Magistrates Court, where you might be taken if you attempt to sell kites <laughs> on the Millennium Bridge. That's where you end up being taken. You may get off you may get a fine. Who knows or dares to dream? But uh, just across from there is the Church of St. Stephen Walbrook. You guessed it, designed by Sir Christopher Wren. But the green dome on the roof, actually, is one of the first of its kind. It was uh, quite innovative in the time. When was it? 1670s or so. And it was actually a kind of practice for the dome of St. Paul's Cathedral. It was a sort of precursor to that. But uh, inside they've got the original telephone that was used by Dr. Chad Valor, who, who, who started up the Samaritans in 1953. He was the rector here, and he invented the Samaritans, which is now a worldwide thing. Now, just around here, by the way, they were digging and they found the ancient Ro a Roman, well, temple of Mithras, actually. It was built in Roman times. It's a pity you can't really see it now, as they've just built this massive building on top of it, but free entry, actually, to the little museum they've got. But it's closed. Such a nuisance doing these videos in the, during the lockdown, but what can I do? I've got to put something up there. Mithras was the Persian god of sun and light, and these guys who had been serving in Persia, when part of the Roman Empire was over there, when they then got stationed in Londinium, they decided to build a temple of Mithras here. And one of the things that the Mithratics used to do is they would sacrifice a bull on the 25th of December. And uh, when Constantine wanted to absorb all these religions and make Christianity the same, the, the main religion, he decided to steal the 25th of December ceremony. So that's why we celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December. I'm not quite sure why they have a jukebox in there though. I don't recall those being in ancient Rome. There's a bunch of mosaic and pots and what have you in there. Once you start noticing these, by the way, you, you, you just don't stop seeing them. You probably wonder, why is there a weird plaque there in this modern thing? It's again, it's, I think it's another parish indication of the parish you're in, which is St. Mary Bot Whore. <laughs> a butt whore. I think it's St. Mary Bot Whore, both Thor or something. I've been looking at the parishes around here. That's one of them. But anyway, I digress. Up there is St. Paul's Cathedral, and we are just opposite Cannon Street Station. And the reason we have come here is because just up here on the left in the wall is the London Stone. Many people wonder what on earth it is. And uh, no one really knows, actually. It's, many legends exist about what it was, but what, one of them is that, that King Arthur drew Excalibur from this very stone. But in Roman times, it was used as a kind of point from which to measure 
places. Like, uh, you know, you are four miles from London, if you're, this is where they measured it from. But Jack Cade, the famous rebel in 1450, he, he had an uprising with his uh, ruffians and he struck this stone with his sword, declaring, I am the Lord of London. And he was promptly dispatched, chased off. There was a fight on London Bridge. King Henry VI pardoned all his ruffians, but Jack Cade himself buggered off to Kent somewhere where I think someone beat him up and then he died. But anyway, these days it just sits there looking a bit sorry for itself. It's easier to go down Threadneedle Street and build a bank and put your shoes on your feet, but it ain't easy for a poor girl to get to heaven. It looks like a dirty river. But that's what it's supposed to look like, because oh, that's what it was. Like an open sewer or something. So it gives you <laughs> old tissues and stuff. This is just a sculpture relating to the brook that ran through here in Roman times. The Walbrook River, that's why that road over there was called Walbrook, used to flow through here. But obviously all this stuff's been built over. It probably still runs underneath London. There's so many underground rivers. But um, now we want to head up there, just to the right there, Queen Street. <laughs> Let's just come this way. I, you'll have to forgive me for being childish, but this is rather amusing. <laughs> Any children watching, cover their ears now. Excellent. Now here, just off Pancras Lane, I quite like the um, sculptures on the back of the chairs, even though they are all covered in bird crap. We are standing here at the start of what in medieval times was known as Grope Cut Lane. <laughs> it really was. There was Grope Cut Lane was here, and it was indeed... What, say for again? Uh, How do you spell it? Exactly as it sounds. <laughs> yeah, because it was... <laughs> It, it was exactly that, because there were lots of prostitutes along here. This was famous for it. And, and the next road over was called something like Bordhor Lane. Not Bordhor Lane, but I think it was, it was from the word Bordello. So they had um, Shearborn Lane is what used to be known as Shiteburn Lane. And Cock Lane, the only street where prostitution was legal. Anyway, when Puritanism came along, people like Oliver Cromwell sort of changed all the names and got rid of these places. But uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't make it up. That, you can find it on the old John Stowe map of London. This, uh, this is where Grote Cut Lane was. <laughs> these are rather good. Look at that. That face got some people being boiled in a pot here. Yeah, I think all the imagery is representing sin, but isn't it? That's when uh, Eve took the apple. There's old Adam there taking a bite. A bit weird, isn't it? You've got all this old stuff and then the gherkin has all popped out into the back. And the London Eye as well. Look. Is it? Oh yeah, that, that's wonderful. How about that? I like that. It's easier for Bob Cratchit to get rich. It's easier to slide down a Cornhill ditch. But it ain't easy for a poor girl to get to heaven. Now Watling Street, where we are now, this is just a tiny section of an old road that existed in Roman times, which actually led all the way from Dubris, which was the Roman name for Dover, up to Verulamium, which was St Albans, and actually beyond. And this is the one where Queen Boadicea, or Boudicca, was uh, defeated in the Battle of Watling Street by the Romans. She was, in another video, I mistakenly say that she's a Saxon queen. She wasn't. She was the Celtic queen of the Iceni and she was fed up because the Romans had come over and killed her family and raped all the women. So rightly, they led uprisings against the Romans. But then Gaius Suetonius Paulinius, was it? Eventually, he managed to corner her and all her hairy brigands and put them to the sword. But she didn't have swords on her chariot. And that's a myth, even though that sculpture of her on Westminster Bridge has that. But anyway, this is the only little uh, section of it that still survives. Um, apart from actually out further out, there's other little sections of it. It goes all the way up to Leicestershire and Warwickshire. And, oh, quite a historic street, really. But um, the whole ward is actually called the Ward of Cordwain, which is why we've got this Cordwainer here. See, the finest leather would be imported from Cordoba in Spain, which is where we get the word from. Because there was lots of shoemakers in this area, but a Cordwainer is different from a cobbler. I think a cordwainer is someone who makes shoes, but a cobbler is someone who mends shoes. If I'm wrong, don't write in. <laughs> I was just, I was actually told that by a cordwainer, funnily enough. And now for a public service announcement. <coughs> just arrived in London and you don't know what to do? Welcome to London. How will you see all its hidden secrets in so little time? If only there was someone to show you around and save you reading all those guidebooks. <sighs> 
some sort of online video guide with a friendly face who's actually from London. Fear not, hardy traveller, help is at hand. Mm. Jules guides are mini bite-sized videos about interesting things to see and do. Hidden gems, colourful characters, how to get around and where to eat, drink and make merry. Jules guides are not available in the shops, so remember to tune in for a jolly spiffing time. But now, it's back to this week's video. It's lovely, you can see St Paul's Cathedral there. This pub here, they claim, is made out of old timbers from ships and stuff by Sir Christopher Wren for his builders who were building the, the St Paul's Cathedral. He was very good like that, wasn't he? Because he built another pub up there, the Old Bell, for people who were building St Bride's Church. That's pretty good of him, just to build a pub specifically for the workmen. Thank you, Channel. Thank you very much. If you want a nice idea of how the layout of roads used to be in medieval times, Bow Lane here is a really good example, I suppose. And this one's called St Mary Alder Mary, meaning St Mary the Older Mary, to distinguish it from other churches called St Mary. But it was designed by, you got it, Sir Christopher Wren. <laughs> you can see why I'm convinced that he started the Fire of London. You got so much work out of it. Sorry if I just am boring you with these things. It's just people do walk past them. Look, JSTG, St. James Garlic Hive. So that's the parish that way. And then HT must be Holy Trinity. Ho Holy Trinity, I think, which was that way. So it's called St. James Garlic Hive because Garlic Hive means like a hive or a wharf. Presumably they used to bring garlic ashore because the river is just over there. Now inside, they've got this mummy of a guy called Jimmy Garlic. Um, it was back in the 17th century, they found this guy perfectly preserved and they think he was probably pickled in rum or something. He, they, he died at sea. He was a young man with fulsome whiskers and uh, people would pay a shilling to come and see Jimmy Garlic. And it wasn't actually that long ago that they stopped putting him on display. Apparently he was hugely well endowed. So <laughs> he was completely naked, so all these women would pay to come and look at him. Because that's the Vintners Hall over there, Vintners Place, you've got one of these company of Vintners people here. A Vintner is a wine merchant. He's got a rod with his uh, three barrels of wine or whatever on the end there. And, um, and the reason why he's standing next to a swan is because he's the barge master and swan marker of the vintners. So not all swans in London belong to the Queen. Um, some of them belong to the Worshipful Company of Vintners. And in order to count them every year, they have this ceremony or something where one of these blokes comes along and I think he puts some marks on the beak of the swan. So when you see a marked swan, you know it's one of the vintners ones. And there over there is, in fact, the uh, vintners hall where 1363, um, King Edward III hosted the, the Feast of Five Kings, and that's why, if the monarch is ever there, they toast five times for the monarch in there. Hip, hip, hooray! They do five cheers rather than three cheers for the monarch. It was actually the Lord Mayor who hosted it. There was King Edward III and the kings of Cyprus, France, Scotland and Denmark. Well, of course, the other thing, we're right by the river here, aren't we, as well? That's the other thing, we're right by the... Uh... We shall try to have a drink and a pub on the river. I expect everything will be closed though. Uh, but before we get there, just a walk past St. Michael Paternoster Royal, where Dick Whittington is buried. Dick Whittington, who was four times, what's it, is it once, twice, thrice, what's four, thrice? <laughs> he was thrice Lord Mayor of London. And uh, he lived in this street and he arranged for this church to be built, I think. Uh, and um, whether he had a cat, or not is uh, up for debate but they say that his cat still haunts the St James garlic hive that we've just seen over there and you you can live exactly where Dick Whittington lived if you like look they're they're for sale flats for sale is it just me or is that uh, Julian seems to be getting taller and taller every day <laughs> 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 Poor joke. <laughs> Actually, if you lived here, <laughs> I guess they were smaller in those days.
look, I was just going on about all these livery companies and halls and everything. This is the Tallow Chandlers Hall. All of these ones down here, they've got beautiful ornate entrances. And uh, this one, the Tallow Chandlers Hall, and it corresponds presumably with that coat of arms up there. And they each have that. And if anyone can tell me what 10 foot and 12 foot refers to, I'll be very interested. Look, MP 10 foot and FP 12 foot. I don't know what those could possibly mean. I'm sure someone will know. I want to start the worshipful company of peddlers. I think that we should apply. Get our robes. I think a kite, a kite should be the coat of arms. Come on. It's easier to go down Threadneedle Street and build a bank and put your shoes on your feet. But it ain't easy for a poor girl to get to heaven. Ah. Cheers, Simon. Cheers. Cheers, sir. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers to all subscribers, and thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry, everything's closed. What can I do? But uh, if you like what I do, don't forget to head over to my website, julesguys.com, where you can find out more about me and get in touch and all that sort of stuff. But above all, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, tell your friends and tell your family, discover me an island, and everything. See you next time. Thank you.